purpose is how I can raise up ordinary men, turning them to become supernatural beings, financial apostles, making life better, bringing people from the dungeon of sin, bringing them into the faith, planting their feet, and raising them. What stop your father will not stop you. Yeah. Lift up your hands and thank him. Oh, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God. Yes, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are all for you are all and Omega and Omega. your Bible with me as we remain standing. We just have two scriptures to knit together and then we will start from somewhere through doing. Luke chapter 10 verse 30 through 37. Luke 10 verse 30 through 37. And Jesus answering said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came a certain priest that way and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and likewise a Levite when he was 
in the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a, but a certain Samaritan as journeyed came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him. Verse 34 and when and went through him and bound him up his wound, pouring in oil and wine. And to him on his own beast brought brought is to an inn and took care of him. And in verse 35, and on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pens and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest, thou, whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. And verse 36, which now of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And verse 37, and he said, he that showed mercy to him, then said Jesus unto him, go and do likewise. In, the, in Acts chapter 20, verse 28, I'll read that, then we can have our seed. Take it therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which had, which had purchased with his blood. Let's read Acts 20, verse 28, all together, chorusly. Take it therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which thou, over which the Holy Ghost had made thee who overseers to feed the church of God which he had purchased with his blood. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Sit down on your enemy's head. It is difficult to preach to pastors because we are preachers and we know the science and technology of preaching so i'm not going to preach it is difficult to also teach pastors who often open the bible day after day to teach and so we are going to talk that's what we are going to do we will talk god is going to speak to us by talking to us. And sometimes if you are too proud. You cannot be blessed. No man is an island in ministry. And no man's own monopoly of knowledge in ministry. So where your wisdom stops in ministry. That's where another man's wisdom starts in ministry. I want to tell you my own part from my own perspective at which God has helped me to the capacity at which I have got into in ministry. And the better way and the best way to learn ministry properly, you can't get it in theology school. Sometimes theology will teach you all the books of the Bible. It's so wonderful, but I'm telling you, ministry has to do with inspiration experience. And today, God will speak to us on what I titled the bleeding leader. The bleeding what? Leader. The bleeding leader. We saw here about the story of the good Samaritan. A man in the book of Luke. Chapter 10 verse 30. The Bible said in verse 30, Jesus, as I said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and he departed leaving and, and departed leaving him half dead. The first thing that the man did was that he went down to Jerusalem and to Jericho and fell among thieves. And fell among thieves. There are leaders that are bleeding. Pastors that are 
dying silently. When a man have accident, the worst cause of bleeding is not the external one, it's the internal bleeding. Where you don't see blood coming out externally, but the person is dying internally. Today I came as a spiritual doctor with a call of emergency to treat your wound. The church has been injured like this man here. He fell down, battered, shattered, and there is nobody to render help. The greatest problem that we have among pastors is to have leaders that are bleeding and there is no spiritual first aid treatment for leaders and pastors that are bleeding. I'm not here to condemn you. But I'm here to speak to you like what the word of God said. Let us reason together. It doesn't matter how long and how bad and how shapeless your life had been as a leader. You can come out. What do I mean by bleeding pastors? There are pastors whom general overseers has made them to become worthless. They feel like not even going. They feel like not continuing in ministry any longer. They are bleeding. The bleeding leader. I'm talking about pastors that have served the ministry for 27 years. No car. No house. No food. No. Their children are wayward. And they ask, is this all about the calling? The bleeding pastor. The pastor that is bleeding internally. That cannot talk. I'm talking about pastors that are in a ministry and under a ministry that have become a slave. A slave. I, I, I was, I was, I, I was uh, looking at some pastor. This pastor was given a car by a member. He was pastoring a branch of a ministry, and he had been in that ministry for fifteen years. I mean, nothing to show. And he drove down to the headquarters. When the general overseer saw him with a brand new car, they collected the car from him. They stopped him from going to that branch and, and they put him on bad seat. Is it a crime to be blessed as a pastor? I'm talking about the bleeding pastor. I'm talking about the bleeding leader. Leaders, pastors that have been accused for nothing that they know nothing about. That have been criticized and been labeled to be demonic and be barbaric not because they are barbaric because of politics in ministry because somebody does not like his face the person has paid journalists to write jargons about him i'm talking about the bleeding leader how can a leader bleed and leads the people no wonder moses look at the children of israelite and say you stiff naked generation you have seen all the wonders a man that was supposed to enter the promised land only saw the promised land because he could not cure and heal the bleed, the internal bleeding that he had inside him. Moses bled to the point where he made mistake. He was supposed to speak to the rock. He struck the rock because the people that he called to pass, that he was called to pastor, they were his problem. I'm talking about a pastor, a leader, a leader that leads people. You taught them how to give. You taught them how to pray. After you have prayed for them, they receive their miracle and go to a big church to share their testimony. I'm talking about the bleeding pastor, the bleeding leader, a leader that is dying silently, quietly, and you can't explain what is going on around your life. Am I called? There is a point you get to as a pastor. Look, I'm called to raise the nobody to become the somebody. So I don't care whether you have 10 members or 5 members. But the problem is that you cannot lead while you are bleeding. Because you can die while leading. And that's why I came to tell you, you will not die until you fulfill your calling. Am I teaching here? Am I teaching here? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? A man bleeding needs a first aid treatment. What is going on among we pastors? 
No, there are no fathers in the body of Christ. I'm sorry to say. We don't have them many. A pastor is dying and you are asking him for tithe. A pastor is dying. The ministry is going down. You are asking him for tithe. What tithe will he pay? When he's in a tight corner. What tithe will a pastor pay when he's in, in a tight corner? I'm talking about the bleeding leader. The leader that is crying quietly. You can't just explain. You can't just explain. Some of you have submitted to a father. Not because you love the father. But because you are afraid of being criticized by the father. There are some people that I call spiritual mafias who are terrorizing children in order to submit to them. All right, teacher. I saw a young pastor under a general overseer. He got visa to go to America. And he went to meet his Jew. I've got him visa. And the Jews say, okay, that's good. You are free to go to America. He left and went to America. Then after it, in two weeks' time, he came back. As soon as he was, he returned back home. They have posted a new pastor to that place. They gave him a sack later. The question I ask, if you don't want him to go, why release him to go? There are leaders that cannot stand the success of their associate pastor. God is going to judge so many general overseers. So many general overseers. God is going to judge them. On Sunday, what you call your assistant pastor or branch pastor is to ask, how much is the tithe and offering? It is no longer how many souls were saved in the service. It is all about money, 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 money. Can I teach you? Mm. The bleeding pastor. I will go back to our scripture. But first, we need to understand this. He said, take it therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over the wish of the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. Every pastor here, whether you are a branch pastor or a head pastor, you are overseers over the flocks. Take it. Feed the church of God. Feed the church of God which he had purchased with his blood. You are not the owner of the church. God is the owner of the church. And the church has been bought by his blood. And it is your duty to feed the flocks. Not to gossip with the flock. It is to feed the flocks. Listen to me. The message that we give to the flock will determine whether these flocks that we have are suffering from spiritual malnutrition or they are well fed with spiritual balanced diet. In Jeremiah 3.15, he said, I will give you pastors according to my heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So we are to feed the flocks with knowledge and understanding. Every messenger without a message, we end up in mess. What makes you a pastor, a minister, a servant of God? It is your message that you dish out to the flocks. Look, anybody can gather crowd. Politicians gather crowd. Magicians gather crowd. Commentators gather crowd. Footballers gather crowd. Social clubs, disco parties gather crowd. What you do with the crowd? We either make it a church, a gathering unto God, or a political gathering, or political rally, or a business center. It is the message that we give the flock that makes it a church. 
And when a pastor does not preach the second coming of Jesus and is not mindful of the soul of the flocks that God has committed to your hand, then there is a problem. Your message will determine your future. Your message will determine the future of your ministry. The greatest problem is to build the church on the gifting when the word is not there. It is the word of God that stabilizes the church. Are we ready? I'm laying the foundation. The bleeding leader. Leaders are not made by appointment. I'm talking about leadership now. Leaders are not made by appointment. You can be appointed a general overseer. It does not make you a leader. You can be an arch apostle. It does not make you a leader. Leaders are not made by appointment or by title. Leaders are not made by appointment or title. Leaders are made by training and learning. Listen to me. If you are not trainable, you are not traceable. Leaders are trained. The secret of your reigning in ministry is training. There are pastors that are too big to learn from another pastor. Ministry is not just the gathering of people, but equipping and building and developing the saints for the coming of Jesus Christ. Ministry is not just the gathering of people, but equipping and building and developing believers for the coming of Jesus Christ. Look here. When you are called, strive to be choosing. Many are called, but few are choosing. Listen to me. When you are a choosing generation, you are now in an higher league. Because I hear people say, I'm called. No, I'm not just only called. I am called and I'm choosing. Hello? Hello? Am I talking to some choosing generation here? Somebody shout a bigger amen. Are you ready to hear this? Really, that's think differently true leaders are readers as a minister as a leader you must learn how to read they said if you want to hide anything from an African man put it in a book for 10 years he might not even read it you must understand that the more you think brother the better it is for you in life. There are different minds ascending your ministry and you must equip them to understand that you are not just narrow-minded. Leadership is taking the lead in your field. Taking the lead in your field. In other words, if a prophet, take the lead at that field. If a pastor, take the lead at that field. If a teacher, set the lead at that feed. If you're an evangelist, set the lead at that feed. If you're an apostle, take the lead at that feed. If you're a, a politician, take the lead at that feed. Study to show yourself approved as a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, there is a way a pastor can teach and make people to be excited. But when you weigh the message, it is noise and not substance. And hear me. A pastor who is not prepared with a message will always make rhymes. Tinkle, tinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the wall so high, like a diamond in the sky. There is a way you can listen to some pastors. For one hour, they are preaching, shouting, and sweating. When you put all they have said together, 
you have nothing than to say in the name of Jesus you are blessed because it's just right and what makes it you can still be highly vocal with substance When a man of God does not prepare message and write message and clamp altar to teach me, I suspect him. This thing is not trial by error. It must be a well-cooked soup. If it is not well-cooked, then you can't convince me. I'm not just an empty brain. I must see that you are prepared for me so I can be prepared to write what you are saying. I'm not just anybody you can just pass by the roadside and talk to me anyhow. You must be prepared if you want to convince me with your message. Sometimes we do try up by error on the stage. Today, the topic is Holy Ghost by fire. Holy Ghost by fire. Holy Ghost by fire. Holy Ghost. So for one hour, you are talking about Holy Ghost by fire. So what has Holy Ghost by fire done to the body of Christ? Right. Church is quiet. We are going there. Someone shout a bigger amen. Leadership is not occupying position, but making outstanding contribution. Leadership is not occupying position, but making outstanding contribution. That I am a general overseer and so on. What have you contributed in the life of people? That is what makes you a leader. I'm going somewhere. Leadership is not teaching principles, but obeying principles. I have seen people teach wonderful sermon on leadership in minister conference, but it cannot be interpreted in their life. So that you are a good teacher about leadership, wow! But what makes you a leader is the practical manifestation of the principle that you teach. The practical manifestation of the principle. So it must be leadership by example, not by preaching. You don't say A today and when it is time, you do B tomorrow. Are we ready? Somebody shout a bigger amen. amen. Say I believe and I know where I'm going through. We talk about types of leader, political leader, spiritual leader, and professional leaders. And these are levels of leaders. And now we are dealing with spiritual leaders, you in the church. And of course, I know there are some politicians here. You also, you have to be at the forefront in life. Pillars of effective leadership. What do I mean by pillars of effective leadership? What you do that make you effective as a leader in ministry. You are not a ruler, you are a leader. And my definition about a leader is the one who knows the way, goes the way, and show the way. He knows the way, he goes the way that he knows, and he shows the way that he knows to others. Number one pillar of effective leadership is quality decision in ministry. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into thy own understanding. In verse 6, he said, And in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Understanding that it is God that when you trust, that he will direct your path. So you must understand that the decision you make now in life and in ministry will determine where you will go in the next 10 years, in the next 50 years. The decision of who becomes your friend. Everybody cannot just be your friend as a pastor. The decision of where to submit. Anybody cannot be your father 
in the Lord. You are not a bastard. You must have somebody to submit to the decision of the kind of ministry that you are called into. There are some of you that are called into prophetic ministry and deliverance ministry because one pastor or apostle or bishop with a myopic and pinjokim, pinjomic or microscopic mentality is teaching and criticizing the deliverance and the prophetic ministry. You make your decision to turn from your calling. Listen to me. There is no man of God that should decide your destiny in ministry. It, your destiny in ministry is decided by you and God. If God has called you to be a co-prophet, hold to the profession of your calling. Understand that some are called into the fivefold ministry either to be a pastor, to be a teacher, to be a prophet, to be an evangelist, to be an apostle. If you know that you are a prophet, you stay in your office and don't allow somebody critical attitude because of envy to distract you from your calling.